But the tank is not invulnerable, as the noted military author David Isby explains. There is no invulnerability in the main battle tank. If you seek invulnerability, you must build a Maginot line, because only that, in one place, under concrete, and not moving, will give you invulnerability. Of course, the Maginot line was outflanked and defeated by light tanks of the German army, tanks which moved very fast and very far, accepting the vulnerability to win the war. Chobham armor is one of the more significant innovations that came out in the 1970s. Developed by the British, it is the first change from steel armor plate that's been used on every main battle tank since the first ones in 1916. It is a composite of laminates, not only of steel, but of other materials. Uh, the composition of it still remains highly classified. An infantry fighting vehicle differs from the armored personnel carrier in that the infantry can fight, can use their weapons from under the armor of the vehicle. Often, these vehicles have heavier weapons that can kill tanks or other armored fighting vehicles, as well as those held by the infantrymen. Obviously, an armored fighting vehicle can move faster than infantrymen can move on the battlefield. In an infantry fighting vehicle, they cannot be killed by machine gun bullets or artillery shell fragments, which historically have been the worst killers of infantrymen. The tanks need infantry in infantry fighting vehicles so they can be up with the tanks to defeat anti-tank guided missiles, anti-tank guns, handheld anti-tank weapons that threaten the tank. Infantry, whether in armored fighting vehicles or on foot, need tanks for the same reasons they have since 1916, to destroy the machine guns that can decimate infantry. The two elements need each other very much. IFVs 